If anybody from the Flutter team ever watches this, I think you're doing some great work. And while I think the idea for Navigator 2.0 is the right one, I don't think the execution was perfect. Also, I apologize for the clickbaity title. It's a little bit rude, but please forgive me for that. And now let's get into the video where we'll discuss what Navigator 2.0 is, why I think the execution wasn't the best, and potential ways to make it better. So let's get into it. So the reason I wanted to make this video is because I've heard some bad things about Navigator 2.0. But I wanted to try to learn it myself to hopefully be able to explain it to you guys about how it actually works and make it a little bit simpler. But although I think I have a sort of understanding of how it works, I don't really think there's a good way to explain it simply. And not only that, it's not very simple for me either. Now before we start, I don't want to pretend like I'm the best Flutter developer out there, like I know everything that there is Flutter related. I still know there's a lot for me to learn and maybe potentially I'm wrong about some of these points. So if you disagree with some of these points, please let me know in the comments. I would like to learn more about this. But I do know most of the Flutter topics I've been able to pick up pretty easily. And this is the one that's tripped me up quite a lot. Now before we get into just me complaining, I want to do a quick run through of what Navigator 2.0 is. So Navigator 2.0 solves four major problems. First is declarative versus the imperative Navigator 1.0. I have a video explaining the difference between declarative and imperative that I'll release in a video soon. But pretty much it's a different way to write code and most of the dark language is written in a declarative way. So thus it makes sense for the Navigator to be written in a declarative way as well. Navigator 2.0 also gives you access to the routes tag. So you're able to manipulate all your routes no matter where you are in the routes tag. It fixes some problems with the operating system events, especially with nested navigation. If you click the back button, you can select which navigator you want to use and everything like that. And lastly, it now has web support, so it's able to support the back button and the forward button and some other things as well. So now you think Navigator fixes those big four problems, what's so bad about it? The fact that it fixes those four problems just lets you know that it's really a necessary change and something that really needed to happen. But like I said, the execution of that wasn't the best. A Navigator 2.0 comes with two different APIs for Flutter developers to use. First one is the Pages API. Now the Pages API is fine, I don't have any complaints about it. It basically just defines your routes and the pages that you use in the app. It seems a little verbose, but I'm not gonna complain about that. It was easy enough to understand. Now my main issue comes with the routes API. So the first red flag when I was learning about the routes API was that it supports both page-based routes and pageless routes. The page-based routes are from Navigator 2.0. The pageless routes are from Navigator 1.0. So the router supports both of them. Now because of this, there needs to be some extra logic to safeguard against Navigator 1.0 changes happening within this. We won't go too deep into that, but I'll show you a little example of it later. Now the argument for doing this from the Flutter team is that we'd still want support for Navigator 1.0. And if you're trying to do something simple, use Navigator 1.0. If you're trying to do something more complex, use Navigator 2.0. And that basically Navigator 2.0 is for the more advanced features that you need. First, having two navigation systems, I think is a little confusing for most people. And having a 2.0 kind of makes it seem like there's a better option. But most people that are starting with navigation, they're obviously going to want to go with the newest navigation system. My next big point is I don't believe that Navigator 2.0 is only for the advanced features. I think as Flutter becomes more and more prominent, you're obviously going to need the back button on the web, even for simple applications. But that was just the first red flag that I saw. Let's go into what router API actually does. So it handles the back button, it sets the initial route, it can push a new route and update the URL. These are all pretty obvious features that a router would need to do in a navigation system. And the router is the one that actually builds the navigator and sometimes uses the pages API if you need. And then this is the part where it gets a lot more complex. So these are the four APIs. First is the route information provider, which is basically the bridge between the operating system and the router. Then there is the route information parser, which like it sounds, parses the route information. And there's the back button dispatcher, which propagates the Android button to the router of choice. And the router delegate, which is like the centerpiece of everything router related. So it sounds a bit complex. Well, here's the chart to make it easier. So we have the operating system, which gives the information to the route information provider, which then takes that information and parses it so that our route delegate can understand it. Then once it goes to the route delegate, the route delegate is like the thing that figures everything out for you. And then we have a very similar flow with the back button. So if your operating system, if you click the back button, it'll take you to the back button dispatcher and that will let the router delegate know what to do with it. Now in here, this is where all the central logic is. The router delegate tells the router widget 
want to update like you remember i said the router actually has the navigator widget in it as well and then we have an app state up here that the router na delegate uses in order to figure out when it should rebuild and things like that in another flutter presentation there's a part here missing where the route delegate has to pass something back here as well i think it has something to do with updating parts of the app and making sure the url updates and all those things and this is about as simple as i can explain it it's manageable if you really dig deep into it it's usable and i also have a bunch of examples more complex examples that you can use in the description but here is as simple of an example as i can make with navigator 2.0 so if you want your whole app to use the router you need to do material app dot router you can just call the specific widget router if you want a certain part of the app like that but we're going to do the whole app so the router has all the information we talked about route information provider route information parser route delegate, back button dispatcher, and all of those. The back button dispatcher and the route information provider have a default. The two that you actually need are the route information parser and the route delegate. So first, let's take a look at the route information parser, which is over here. This one's not too bad. So we have three routes that I named, first, second, and third. And this route information parser parses information from the provider and basically returns the route that we need. So if we get a URL with a backslash, make the route first, we get a URL with slash second, route second. And then here, restore route information is basically the flip of that. So this is the delegate logic. The route delegate extends the router delegate, but we do it with change notifier and with pop navigator route delegate mixin. These are here because without these, we would have to override five functions and fill all the information for all five overrides. This makes it a little bit simpler where you only have to override a couple functions but still it's not that simple so if you remember the router builds the navigator that's what we have down here so build the navigator with the navigator key which we create inside this router delegate we create an instance of our configuration basically a state of which route we are in we're able to retrieve that state we're able to set that state and notify listeners because it's a provider and we're able to set new route paths so basically set that state. There's a small little override for web application. Don't worry about this one as much. Just these are the main things that we need. So then if you remember, I said at the beginning that it implements Navigator 1.0 and 2.0. Because of that, we need this on pop page function. This one basically checks if we did a Navigator 1.0 pop, you execute this function and basically do whatever you want here. In this case, if we do a pop, we're just gonna set the configuration or the state in which route we are in to the first route. So then here we have the navigator key handle and the on pop page handled. Now using the pages API, you can load in your pages into here, but I haven't seen one example from the Flutter team or from anywhere doing that. All the examples have been of them creating the actual pages here within if statements. Now obviously this is probably my own fault. I could do more digging and figure out how all that works. Would have been nice to have an example. Anyways, we have the three pages, which is the first page, second page, and third page. The second page and third page only come through if the route that we have is within the correct one and then the rest is just simple we get router dot of context and we set the configuration to whichever page we want and things work well so here's the app we have we go to the second page third page back to second page and then the back button of course works takes us back to third second back to the very first page if we go to the third page and click this back button which is a navigator 1.0 pop It'll take us directly back to the first page and things are working that's about as basic of an example as you can get that example is obviously in the description but well, here's two other github libraries you can use to learn about it even better we have carlos Hua, and he has a very sim more simple looking main it looks like it should work and then this is a really good repository by dominic he has almost every single 2.0 feature where you can remove pages from underneath and things like that if you do want to dig into 2.0, I would recommend you check this repository, kind of figure it out. But looking at this repository is so complex. <laughs> okay, so maybe you have a handle of what Navigator 2.0 is about. Now let's get to me complaining. To start off, Navigator 2.0 is definitely better than 1.0. And these features are necessary. You need the back button and the forward button to work in web. And it solves the big issues from Navigator 1.0. But I think having two options makes it a lot more confusing. The argument is Navigator 1.0 can still be used for basic things. I don't think that's a valid argument because 
the back button, forward button, it seems like a pretty basic thing to use. And if Navigator 2.0 was set up in a more simple to use way, I could definitely see it being even easier than Navigator 1.0. You have all your pages defined, you know what's going on. It's easier to be debug route problems, even for simple apps. And I think actually mixing the two makes it even more complex. The on pop page function, I think would not have to be required if that wasn't the case. I could be wrong about that, but it could just be an extra feature that is optional instead of required. Third, it seems like it, we have to do everything manually in order to get the functionality of navigation. It seems like I'm using provider to rewrite a whole custom navigation system for myself. Like technically it's obviously a little simpler than writing a whole system like that, but still very verbose. And on top of that, I don't think a the Flutter team did the best job of showcasing it. There, I haven't seen any examples using Pages API with Router API, which I assume is the intention. There didn't seem to be any simple examples. Every example they try to show off was a very complex use case, which is important, obviously, since it can do complex things. But it would be nice, at least for me to understand in a simple way. Navigator 2.0 seems to be built with the intent of having a package that basically makes it simpler for people to use. My question is why need a package when Flutter might have been able to just do that as well. And there's a lot of packages trying to address this Navigator 2.0 issue like Flow Builder, Auto Route, Fluoro, and Page Router. And I think routing and navigation is such a core thing of any application that it should be made simple enough to not need to use a separate package. Or at least the Flutter team could create a package that you know is something you can trust and things like that. Navigator 2.0 is marketed towards to be for more complex stuff. But I believe there's a way to make it work for both simple and complex stuff. And I think it'd be a lot easier for people to understand. All the functionality that people want would be there and be able to use simply. And how to do that? I think, first of all, just get rid of 1.0. Imperative doesn't seem to be the right way to do it. And it seems to just bring in a lot of problems. It'll make it simpler so there's only one navigator you know which one to choose add some more default cases for navigator 2.0 maybe some better examples so people could understand it easier and try to reduce complexity where possible i think it'll be better to have one good option instead of two options that have some trade-offs so that's all the complaining for me if you have any suggestions or explanations for where i was wrong please make sure to leave in the comments i'd like to learn more about this and maybe there's a reason for all of this that i don't know but it seems like i'm not the only one who thinks this is difficult a lot of the comments on the medium articles and videos are pretty rude hopefully mine came off more respectful <laughs> i think the flutter team is doing an amazing job most of flutter has been very simple to learn and i think this is just the one exception but thank you for watching make sure to check the description for all the links to all the repositories and ways to learn make sure to like subscribe and share if you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching